الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا Dear committed Muslims after this month of Ramadan and into the challenges of the coming year Allah Jalla Sha'nuhu says pertaining to this month-long disciplinary fast وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ so that you may magnify and amplify Allah pertaining to that for which He has guided you وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And Rasulullah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his, says, زَيِّنُوا أَعْيَادَكُمْ بِالتَّكْبِيرَاتِ Decorate your Eids with takbirat. This is a substantial statement. Many of us have succumbed to routine and habits and the monotony of saying Allahu Akbar. We have to liberate ourselves from the meaningless monotony that is accompanied with these words. Saying Allahu Akbar is a very important and significant statement because what we are intending to say is that Allah is greater, more important, more substantial, more significant than anything that will distract from Him. And most of the distractions come from power, sources, and from authoritative references. This is where most of the distractions come from. And we say to them, and they know themselves, we say, because Allah and His Prophet taught us, especially as we emerge from the discipline of fasting, we say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. We cannot cover the whole territory of all of the distractions that are around because there's many of them. 
but we shall emphasize in the time frame that we are in a couple of these distractions. The first one is the attempts that try to sway the Muslims away from their self confidence in Allah Jalla wa'ala one of the major weaknesses in the Muslims is that they lack this self confidence that comes from an attachment to the magnanimity of Allah Azza wa Jal if you are in the company of Allah Nothing else should have a detrimental effect on your psychology. Nothing. And so when you say Allahu Akbar, you say that I am not going to acquiesce to those who are interfering with my relationship to the Almighty. Another synonym of the words Allahu Akbar is that he is the Almighty, Al Qawi, Al Qadir, Al Muqtadir. Innama amruhu idha arada shay'an an yaqula lahu kun fayakun. His affair is if he wants something. To happen, he but says to it, be, and it is. So why do we have crippled psychologies? And they want to use the materialistic world against the universe inside of us. A universe that should be occupied by the Almighty. We have conditions, truth be said. We the Muslims, we have conditions that had any other peoples in the world of whatever religion, whatever persuasion, if they were subjected to what we are subjected to, they would have succumbed and they would have surrendered a long time ago. And we say in our takbirat, Allahu Akbar kabira, walhamdulillahi kathira. You see, in these circumstances, you would be surprised. How is a person who's a Muslim, whose social body is hemorrhaging, how does a person like that say, alhamdulillahi kathira? We profusely and we generously thank Allah even in the adverse and in the debilitating and in the murderous conditions that we find ourselves in. And I'm not talking about we here, the few of us at Jumu'ah or at Eid prayers in Washington DC in front of the Islamic Center. I'm talking about the Muslims in their 1.8 billion numbers in the world. They come in a place like Egypt. An imam, a leader, gives a khutbah. And he says something to the effect, Allahumma ahliki al-zalimeen. Oh Allah, cause oppressors to perish. And then all of the system comes down on him. What's wrong with that? Allah, he didn't say any, he didn't mention any name. No ruler, no president, no king. Just that general statement. Allahumma ahliki al-zalimeen. And then he's forbidden to leave the country. And then he's forbidden to give a khutbah in the masjid. What world? And then Muslims, just like you and I, Muslims, they may have a lack in the ideological, political compartment of their mind, 
But nevertheless, they are sincere Muslims. Now they are behind bars. And the world is looking askance. The world, the media, the mainstream media in the world is looking the other way as if nothing is happening. When you look at these developments as a committed Muslim, what do you do? You say, oh, I'm going to go with the flow. I'm going to become one of the sheep in the collectivity of sheeple. Is that who we are? Is that what we mean when we say Allahu Akbar Kabira Walhamdulillahi Kathira Wa Subhanallahi Bukra Tawa Asila La ilaha illallahu wahda Sadaka wada Wa Nasara Abda Wa Azza Junda Wa Hazam al Ahzaba Wahda Whether we take a look at Egypt or whether we take a look at Iran there have been these discussions that have been continuing now for months and for years. And then the whole world comes out and says there's some type of agreement. Well, the proof is in the pudding. If there's an agreement, let's see who is going to honor the agreement and who's not going to honor the agreement. There are days now that are approaching. There's a future that is coming and we shall see if there's any gimmicks or shenanigans that are involved in these types of agreements and as a reminder Camp David some of us are old enough to remember back in the late 1970s when there was an agreement called the Camp David Accords how long did those discussions continue? Two weeks. This is what is called the Palestinian-Israeli issue. An issue around which world politics pivot. And it took two weeks for the Egyptian head of state to surrender. And Egypt was taken out of its Islamic mold and out of its Arab character and out of its patriotic duties. Surrender. Two weeks. The Palestinians after that themselves, they went to Oslo. See, they didn't go. These negotiators, these people who sign on the dotted lines, they didn't go with the character and the conviction of Allahu Akbar. The Palestinians in the Oslo agreements, two months. And then they signed on the dotted line and they gave up Palestine. And they were willing to recognize the occupation of the Holy Land. Two months. These negotiations that are trumpeted now in the world, they continued for multiple years. And now there's a disagreement of whether it is serving one side or the other. Whatever the case is, there is an Islamic will. Whether that Islamic will is in Egypt, or whether that Islamic will is in Iran, wherever it is, it is a will that is beginning to express the confidence that comes from reliance upon Allah and only Allah. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ And then, and then we have the other irritant and detraction, which is sectarianism here. There now is, and we say this, knowing that Allah is above, and Allah is in control, and that Allah ultimately decides. We know that there are many innocent Muslims, young Muslims, zealous Muslims who don't know it, but they are being recruited by the enemies of the Muslims. They go online and they are fascinated by what they see and they say, this is the solution, what can I do? And they find themselves at the battlefields killing other Muslims or killing other innocent human beings. 
And this has nothing to do with Allah or his prophet, but it has everything to do with those who are baiting these innocent Muslims. An example of which we, of which we heard of just yesterday. Knowing all of this, which we should, unfortunately, this is a gray area in the public Muslim mind. And in many Muslims are falling victim to this. But our confidence is in Allah's control, Allah's supervision, and Allah's mercy. Before, during, and after all of these developments. Because ultimately, we are all on our way to Allah. When you approach Allah in your salah, you say, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Any other expression could have carried the meaning of guidance. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to relay this meaning of guidance as a straight path. Meaning our life is a movement. And eventually this movement, we shall surrender to Allah. And we ask that once the time and the moment comes and we surrender our lives, it will be done on the terms of Allah, not on the terms of intelligence agencies and certain regimes and certain recruiters for the cause of a shaitan in the name of Islam. وَالْعِيَاذُ billah. إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم أدعوه سبحانه وأنتم موقنون بالإجابة وتوبوا إلى الله غافر الذنب وقابل التوب شديد العقاب وإليه المصير الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا Dear brothers and sisters, committed Muslims Like every year, this is what happens Don't expect anything else Like every year, there's a conflict among Muslims, a disagreement of whether today is the Eid or tomorrow is the Eid. Some years Muslims celebrated the beginning of Ramadan on three or four different days. And this is just in the past 20 or 30 years. On other occasions, the Muslims celebrated the Eid on four or even five different days. This is a shame. And it is about time that we are familiar with the ABCs of the beginning of the lunar month and the ending of the lunar month. Or else we are going to continue to, to spin in this vicious circle of multiple Eids. There may have been some type of explanation for some Muslims celebrating Eid on one day and other Muslims celebrating Eid on another day when the world did not have the intensive technology, the transportation and communication systems that we have today. In centuries past, if a person saw the Hilal in Morocco, how, for example, how is that person who saw the Hilal in Morocco going to communicate 
or reliable Muslims saw the Hilal in Morocco, how are they gonna communicate this to the rest of the world? It was impossible. It was the Pony Express. There were no radios, no television, no satellites, no internet, nothing of the sort. So they went by the best that they had. So if someone saw it somewhere, they'd have it on that day. If others saw it in another part of the world on another day, they'd have it on another day. And they wouldn't even know that they had it on different days simply because the information wasn't available to them. But in today's world, what excuse is there? لِتَعْلَمُوا عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ يُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمٍ يَعْلَمُونَ The ayah makes it clear that the sun and the moon with their functions and with their characteristics are calculated and we just have to obtain those calculations at one time Muslims were the leaders were the scientists of the world in astronomy, in geography. Now we are way behind. When others have done their calculations, we still are not capable of understanding these calculations, thereby solving this issue of when the, month, the lunar month begins and when the lunar month ends. And then they play politics with this issue. If a particular government is an enemy of another particular government, these governments don't want to have the Eid on the same day. We have to purge ourselves of this type of foolishness and mature so that we can have more or less a Eid of uniformity. Allahumma arina al haqqa haqqa وقهم عذاب الجحيم ربنا وأدخلهم جنات عدن التي وعدتهم ومن صلح من آبائهم وأزواجهم وذرياتهم إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للقوم الظالمين ربنا نجنا برحمتك من القوم الكافرين ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا افتح بيننا وبين قومنا بالحق وأنت خير الفاتحين ربنا اكشف عنا العذاب إنا مؤمنون ربنا اكشف عنا العذاب إنا مؤمنون ربنا اكشف عنا العذاب إنا مؤمنون وصلاتك وسلام على خير خلق محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر ومن أظلم ممن منع مساجد الله أن يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في خرابها أولئك ما كان لهم أن يدخلوها إلا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ And brothers and sisters, this is a day of Eid. It has to be as much as you are capable of. It has to be a day of happiness to your family, to your neighbors, to your relatives, 
to those who are close to you, even though there's a lot of sadness and misery and pain in the Muslim body in this world, if you can, at least, iman, the least that could be expected, if you can express your joy to those who are around you, please do so on this day. Wajazakumullahu khayran wa kulla amin wa antum bi khayr. Eid Sa'id to each and every one here and beyond. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Kullu amin wa antum bi khayr. Thank <laughs> you.